Hey there everyone, I'm John from Aguinas Games and welcome to a new series of videos that I want to put out where I basically talk about video gaming news and anything that's video games related. So for the first video, let's kick it off in style and talk about the Resident Evil 2 remake. Now I'm a massive, massive Resident Evil fan and I also love Resident Evil 2. It's my favourite game ever made. I can play that game in the same vein as people who play Super Mario and Pac-Man. I know the game like the back of my hand, I've completed it several times, I've completed it under three hours to get the infinite rocket launcher, etc, etc. You know, it is, for me, the best Resident Evil game that's been released. Obviously, I have a lot of love for 4, the first game's remake, and the newly released Resident Evil 7. That's pretty damn good as well. But today, I wanted to talk more about Resident Evil 2's remake, which is coming soon. It's coming next year, in January, I believe. And I'll be honest and be the first to say that I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought it was just Capcom appealing to the fans, and then it would basically get stuck in development hell. For a long time... I thought it was stuck in development hell. I mean, first we had uh, one of the game's producers saying, we do it with the t-shirt. And I thought, yeah, great, it's, it's coming. They're going to do it. Like, fans have actually finally got what they want. You know, the fans have won. And then after that, there was nothing. There was, like, zero news, no screenshots, just nothing surrounding the game. Until the last E3 where Capcom decided to show not one trailer, but two, and put the gameplay demos up online as well. One of the trailers that I saw, the first trailer I believe, is the one where the mouse is running around on the table, and it's in first person, which I thought was a great move by Capcom to do that. And I think doing it this way um, didn't make it obvious that it was a, a Resident Evil game. So the mouse climbs onto this like shelving unit, and the shelving unit ends up falling over, crushing the mouse, and the camera zooms out and then you see a zombie tussling with what looks like a security guard and subsequently eats him. And then next minute you hear a gunshot, the zombie's head explodes, falls down, slumps over. And behind him you see Leon Scott Kennedy standing behind him. Now I mean this was a great reveal. I'm glad Capcom went this route with the trailer reveal because you know for a long time you don't know what game it is that you're seeing until you eventually see the zombie and then see Leon Kennedy. Uh, first things first, graphically, the game looks amazing. It's running off of the RE7 engine, which is, I believe it's called the RE engine. And as you kind of expect with uh, how Resident Evil 7 looked, the characters look great, the environments look great, the particle effects, things like that, Just it just all looks really, really smooth and the detail is, is absolutely 100% on point. One thing I did want to point out is uh, the fact people seem to have an issue with Leon and Claire's design. I don't really know where everyone's coming from with this because I don't think the designs are that bad. Um, they're going for a more realistic, lifelike look and I think what they've gone for and what they've achieved is perfectly fine. I know Leon now sports like a massive bum chin but to be honest that gives him a bit of character, you know? He's less cartoony and more realistic. And I think Claire looks fine as well. The fact they've used sort of two mocap actors in order to get the characters' looks, I think is great because you go back and you look at Resident Evil 7 and Chris's, you know, motion capture actor, it looks nothing like uh, Chris did back in the day and uh, when he started, you know, taking steroids and punching boulders and whatnot. So yeah, characters, they're fine. I haven't got any issues with how they look. The, um, the game seems to be a lot more darker than the original, kind of following in the same vein as uh, Dead Space and games like Silent Hill, where, um, you know, Leon has to kind of use his flashlight and shine it in order to cut through the darkness and see if anything's about to jump out on him. Now, the original Resident Evil 2 was a very well-lit, very, despite it being a horror game, it was a very colourful game as well. The remake, however, is a lot more darker. But the reason I think Capcom have done this is actually to heighten the sense of tension and dread uh, that you'll feel when you're playing through the game. The fact is, zombies aren't as scary as they once were, whether it be in movies or even, you know, the Resident Evil series. Um, zombies kind of had their day, and Capcom moved away from zombies and started to have more human-like enemies, like the crazy possessed villagers in Resident Evil 4 and the bakers in Resident Evil 7. However, I think with this game and from what I've seen in uh, the gameplay demos, it's a great idea to make the game darker because the zombies instantly become scary again because you don't know where they're going to jump out. You have no idea if they're behind you, in front of you, unless you're shining your torch. 
they can hide in corners and just leap out at you. I think it's it's going to add that element that's been lacking in the series for quite a while. I mean, I haven't found a Resident Evil game scary since, I'd say, the, the remake of the original. So yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of parts of what I saw uh, during the gameplay demos were dark, were pretty dark, and without a flashlight... It would have been pitch black. But there are rooms that I did see in the gameplay demos. You know, they were well lit. Say, like, the the newly designed library for uh, the remake. That's really well lit. And uh, it's a lot bigger than the original. Or it seems bigger than the original. It's great. I mean, a lot of the rooms they've redesigned. But kept elements from the original Resident Evil 2. And also played with a few uh, variations of things that happen. You know, you don't get that reveal of the liquor in the downstairs part of the Raccoon Police Department. Where it's on the ceiling and then Leon looks up and it, you know, hisses at him and drops down. Instead, what you get here is uh, one police officer that's had his mouth kind of slashed open and a couple of claw marks on the wall of the rpd building so i'm guessing the liquor is going to be revealed a little later on but in the demo the gameplay demo that i saw it wasn't revealed and i think that's great because instead of taking all the old games gimmicks and just reusing them they're coming up with their own new like ideas and gimmicks within this remake gameplay wise from what i saw it looked very good I wasn't expecting it to be first person, I was expecting it to be third person over the shoulder just like Resident Evil 4 and any other Resident Evil games post Resident Evil 4. Now do I think this is a good thing or a bad thing? I'm not really fussed to be honest, if it had been fixed camera I would have been happy. But as it is it's over the shoulder, third person and I'm cool with that. I also like the fact that you can move and shoot but that makes Leon's aim less accurate. Whereas if you stand still on the spot and try and aim your gun, you'll get better accuracy. Another addition they've added to the remake is the fact Leon can stick his survival knife into a zombie in order to get them off of him when they're trying to, you know, munch his brains or his neck and whatnot. This is a gameplay mechanic that's been brought over from the remake of the first game. Some other things that I'm happy to see have returned are the item boxes and the return of the typewriters which were severely lacking in Resident Evil 7. Also, I believe on harder difficulties, you are able to get ink ribbons. So that's pretty cool. The game also has Resident Evil 4's adaptive difficulty setting as well. So if you're doing better in the game, it gets harder. If you're doing worse in the game, it gets easier. The zombies look to be a much more challenging enemy as well, where they can sort of grab Leon in packs and also just smash doors open, you know, in order to get you as well as climb over things, or I guess fall over them, because they're zombies, you know. Some of the weapons I got to see were uh, Leon's standard issue handgun, and also the famous pump action shotgun. Well, one of the coolest things actually was when Leon shoots a zombie with the shotgun, it can actually damage the zombie in different ways. So at one point he shot a zombie, blew its head off, clean off. At another point he shoots a zombie and basically like grazes it with the shotgun pellets, and it sort of takes the skin off the zombie and you can see kind of like a little bit of its skeletal structure underneath. I thought that was very cool and is like an upgraded version of what you saw in the original in terms of how you could damage and um, blow bits off of zombies. I've just realised I haven't actually talked about how the zombies actually look. Um, yeah, they look wicked. They look fantastic. They've got the old school kind of look with uh, the white pupils and grey pale skin. Which is how I like my zombies to look, to be honest. I love that old school evil dead look. More so than the 28 days later kind of looking zombies. Um, other monsters that I've seen, bioweapons I should say, like the liquor, I've seen a few glimpses of that. And it looks cool. It actually looks like it has one big sort of claw forearm and the other arm seems to look like normal. Now it could just be a strange angle, you know, the picture was sort of taken from but yeah other than that not much obviously has changed the liquor's design other than that it looks you know better than the originals because of the graphical update uh, some other monsters that i saw were very quickly and very briefly william birkin and his uh, g form uh, some of the stills that were taken show you know his face his g form face and uh, obviously the claw as well the massive claw that he has with the eyeball another well-known enemy from resident evil 2 the original one uh, makes his appearance in the trailers and that's Mr. X, or the tyrant that's dropped into Raccoon City and into the Raccoon Police Department to stalk Claire and Leon throughout their Scenario B, G, 
chapters. Obviously he has his huge jacket still, but on top of that he's got a fedora now that he wears with um, kind of a little nod to kind of 1950s Americana style. And his face, whilst looking similar, is almost clay-like and looks like it's kind of been stretched across something. It's pretty fucked up looking. I like the new design of him very much. Next to the enemies, uh, I did get to see... Ada Wong or at least her silhouette because in the trailer it's too dark to make out any features but she looks again much like Mr. X to be sporting a 1950s style spy costume. Um, I'm kind of getting the hint that Capcom are going to try something different with this remake and introduce a kind of 1950s Americana style mixed in with a more new age style. Some of the cars as well that you get to see in the parking garage located in the RPD look like then from sort of 1950s America as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how they pull that off and I'm kind of guessing that maybe Raccoon City is a, a city that's kind of lost to time, you know. So there's some new age stuff but there's also some, some old 1950s style mixed in there as well. Alongside Ada Wong in the trailer, you also get to see Sherry Birkin in a cutscene where she's talking to Claire. I believe the cutscene takes place in a room that's from the original Resident Evil 2, where Sherry's on her own and has to kind of push these boxes up against the wall and fill the room up with water so that the boxes float up so Sherry can cross the boxes and get her hands on, I believe it's the spade key or the club key. One of those keys. In this version of Resident Evil 2 though, it looks like Claire will be accompanying Sherry throughout most of the campaign. Saying that though, it's only speculation on my part and could be a completely entirely new room. I'm just going by the little bits of Claire we get to see in the trailer. I also caught a glimpse from the trailer of the mayor of Raccoon City's daughter, who's from the original Resident Evil 2, and that leads me to think that obviously Chief Irons is going to be present as well at some point because she's sort of spread across his table like she is in the original. It also looks like we're going to get some new characters that Leon and Claire get to meet up with. Uh, one was a cop that unfortunately dies pretty early on in the game. He gets um, severed in half by some uh, zombies. As Leon tries to save him and he's still kind of like clutching at thin air, dying, he's kind of choking on his own blood. It's pretty disgusting. It's pretty fucked up. But, um, you know, put a pretty big smile on my face because I was like, that's classic Resident Evil. On top of those characters, I'm just trying to think. The only one that I can think of that's left is Marvin Branagh, who was a police officer you meet in the original Resident Evil 2. His, um, his role was quite short in the original game. He's kind of there to tell Leon and the player what's gone on, who Umbrella is, and then, you know, points a gun at Leon's head and tells him to basically leave him because he knows he's infected with the T-virus and he's going to turn into a zombie at some point. You do get to meet up with him a bit later on in the game, but he turns into a zombie and you have to, you know, you have to kill him. In the remake, however, it looks like he plays a much bigger role in terms of story, and he's the guy that actually gives Leon his survival knife and a radio. So the RPD building um, actually looks slightly different from the original Resident Evil 2, and some things are placed in different areas. Rooms, for instance, are shuffled around and mixed up, so they're not in the exact same place that they were in the original. There's some new rooms that you get to see during the gameplay demo, um, like a locker room that Leon finds a pump action shotgun in. And it seems like the staircase that leads up to the star's office is a little bit bigger than it was in the original. I definitely got the feeling that the new RPD is a lot more layered than the original Resident Evil 2's RPD. But you do get to see some rooms like the photographic evidence room, which is really cool because I absolutely loved that room in the original. And also the conference room. However, this time the conference room is actually accessible from the start of the game as opposed to like halfway through it. The hallways as well that lead you to like the star's office were really well designed or redesigned, you could say. But from what I could tell, these were the areas that were the most darkest. So even though they were quite dark, when Leon would shine his torch on something, you still get to see the level of detail that Capcom have put into this new remake. So, so far I've covered the monsters, characters, graphics, subtle differences and major differences compared to the original, and some of the guns you'll be getting in the game as well, which moves me nicely onto the game's soundtrack. From what I heard, there wasn't much of it in the trailers and the gameplay demo. Now, I do believe that the original composer 
for Resident Evil 2, and I believe some of the older Resident Evil games is also back for this score. However, in the trailers that I saw in the gameplay demo, the soundtrack seemed to be a little bit sparse. Now, there was a newer gameplay demo that came out, and I got to hear that original theme from when Leon or Claire enters the RPD building for the first time. Uh, this time it was a little bit more subtle. It wasn't as in your face as the originals. At this point in time, I can't really comment on the game's soundtrack. At the moment, I would say that it's a little too sparse, but because these are early trailers of the game and also early gameplay demos, I believe the soundtrack's gonna change considerably as the game gets closer to release. Uh, Story-wise as well, I would say kind of on the same boat as the soundtrack. Obviously, it's gonna follow some plot points that stem from the original, but they're also gonna switch up the storyline and throw, you know, a ton of new stuff in there as well. So until the game comes out and I play it for myself, I can't really comment on the story because I'm about as in the dark as anyone else. One thing I will say though, is the game will probably follow in the same vein as the original's remake, in that it has its base story from the original, but it builds upon it and adds more layers to it. That's what I think Capcom are planning to do with this particular remake. And it's pretty obvious they're planning to switch things up a bit because at one point in the trailer or one of the trailers, Mr. X actually gets killed by William Birkin. Now, he's quite an important character in Resident Evil 2, the original, and he chases Leon and Claire throughout their B scenarios right up until pretty much the end where you have to take him out of a rocket launcher. Now, the fact that he gets a hole punch through his chest by William Birkin's G-Form in this remake. And the fact that it looks maybe midway through the game, to me at least, is definitely a telltale sign that Capcom are making a remake, but also making a reimagining of sorts. A few of the other things that I thought were cool during the gameplay demos were the fact that you can board up windows now. You can collect wooden boards and use them on any open windows to keep the zombies from getting into the RPD. Now that's a straight nod to the original Resident Evil where you could find fuses and use them on fuse boxes to bring down shutters in certain areas of the police department to keep the zombies from getting in. Obviously in this remake, you're able to board up windows whenever you want if you have any wooden boards in your inventory. I also got to see something that made its way over from Resident Evil 7 and that's taped up switch boxes that Leon needs to open by cutting the tape with his combat knife. That's definitely something that they've brought over from Resident Evil 7. And things like Leon having to scale a wall and climb through a small opening in order to get to a new room. That reminds me of uh, Resident Evil 7's moments where you play as Mia on the ship and you have to do the same thing. Other than that, the Resident Evil 2 remake doesn't look like it's copying Resident Evil 7. It doesn't look like it's brought everything over. Just a, f a few small little things, you know, to spice up the gameplay a bit. Another addition they're bringing back for Resident Evil 2 remake is the option to make your own ammo from collecting gunpowder. Now, this was last seen in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, I believe. And you could also do it in Resident Evil 7 by mixing chem fluid with gunpowder. Now, I do love this mechanic. It's a great mechanic, but... I don't want it to take away from the survival horror elements of the game. So obviously Resident Evil Nemesis was a lot more action packed than one and two because of the fact that you could create your own ammo types. So you could always just find some gunpowder, mix it together and get like 50 shotgun shells. In Resident Evil 7, however, gunpowder was quite sparse and you would only ever get certain chances to mix it together with chem fluid and create some ammo. If they keep it like that in Resident Evil 2, I'll be happy. Campaign-wise, I think Resident Evil 2 Remake only has Leon's campaign and Claire's campaign to play through. So you do get two separate campaigns, but you don't get the B scenarios, which came with the original Resident Evil 2. I'm not too bothered about this, to be honest. Um, I think that Leon and Claire's campaigns are going to be quite lengthy, and we're not going to really need any Scenario B campaigns on top of the ones we're getting already. Or at least I hope they're going to be lengthy. If they're not, well, me and a lot of other Resident Evil 2 fans are going to be pretty pissed. Some small minor things that I noticed while I was watching one of the trailers was um, definitely seems like Hunk's going to be in the game because you can kind of hear his voice. He's talking to someone. You don't actually see him, but you do hear what's kind of like a voice that's behind sort of a gas mask. So I'm guessing that's Hunt. And also you do hear someone um, talking about transactions being processed. That could either be Chief Irons because he was on Umbrella's payroll or it could be Wesker. They could actually introduce Albert Wesker into this game because it was only ever hinted that he was kind of behind the scenes during Resident Evil 2. Um, it's supposedly him that saves Ada Wong as she falls to her death in Leon's Scenario A campaign. 
but I'm kind of guessing that it might be Chief Irons. And you also get to see what looks like a little girl in quite a brief segment of the trailer. Um, I'm not sure who this is. It could be a zombified child that is just sort of walking around the streets of Raccoon City. Or it could actually be Evelyn from Resident Evil 7, or at least the Evelyn-type bioweapon. Now, as far as I know, the Evelyn-type bioweapon was produced way after Resident Evil 2 takes place. Sure. But maybe, just maybe, um, there's going to be a connection between Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 7. I don't really know what Capcom are going to do in terms of connections to the older games and also connections to the games that take place after Resident Evil 2's story. But that's one of the many mysteries that uh, the trailer holds. Or it could just be Sherry um, walking the streets. And speaking of Sherry, we also get to hear her mother Annette Birkin's voice as well during the trailer. It's definitely 100% Annette Birkin because she's talking about how deadly the G-Virus is and that they didn't anticipate how strong it'd become. So on top of those things, um, we can be sure that things like mice spreading the T-Virus will still be prominent in this game. Hence the reason why you see a mouse at the beginning of the trailer. The fact that William Birkin will kill the team of Umbrella agents sent to steal the G-Virus off of him. Raccoon City is going to be still pretty much fucked and beyond redemption. Leon's going to meet up with Ada still and have that kind of love story relationship plot going on. And Claire's going to meet up with Sherry and essentially become her surrogate mother during her campaign. How Leon and Claire interact during both their campaigns though is still a mystery. What I can say is from the trailer it looks like Leon meets his first zombie outside of the city at a gas station or a rest station and that's when you get the whole zombie scuffling with the sheriff scene uh, where he meets Claire from this point on is like I said still very much a big mystery during the gameplay demo though when Leon comes across Marvin Branagh they're both looking at a computer screen and he sees Claire trying to enter the RPD and Leon comments that, you know, he's glad that she made it there. So obviously those two have met. Their meeting still takes place in this version of Resident Evil 2. Someone who wasn't present during the gameplay demos or the trailers was actually Robert Kendo, who owns Kendo's Gun Shop. And you get to meet him at the very beginning of Resident Evil 2 through the Scenario A campaign. Now I'm hoping and I'm praying that Capcom haven't cut him out of the game because... Robert Kendo is a very much beloved character by RE fans. He only has a brief appearance in the original Resident Evil 2 and subsequently gets eaten by a pack of zombies who break into his shop while you're in there. But because I think he was like the first sign of human life other than Claire that you meet, um, he's become quite a well-loved character within the series in his own right. So I'm hoping Capcom haven't cut him out of the game. And they're sort of just hiding him and his death until the game's released. And there was also a rumour of another character being cut altogether. I'd say character, but it's more of a monster. And that's the alligator, the giant alligator that you get to fight in the sewers in the original Resident Evil 2. Apparently Capcom said that they cut it out originally, but... Since people showed their disappointment with the fact that they cut the alligator out of the remake, um, Capcom, I think, are actually aiming to put that boss fight back in the game. Which is great news because I absolutely love that boss fight. It's iconic and should not be left out of a remake that's basically based on Resident Evil 2. So I think that's basically it. I think I've covered a lot from the trailers and the gameplay demos in maybe a bit of a messy way but that's because this is kind of a mix of free flow and then cutting bits out of the, uh, the video as well. It's the first time I've done a thoughts and opinions video so it's just me kind of rambling on and at least trying to put it in some sort of structure. What I think about the Resident Evil 2 remake is that it looks very 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 promising uh, I don't have to wait too long to actually get to play the game because it's coming out in January. So I'm going to be able to come up with some real opinions and thoughts when I play the game 100%. Um, I think from what I can see and what I've seen from trailers and the gameplay, the game looks amazing. The graphics are on point. I think Capcom have done extremely well with how the game looks with its art style and just overall gore and violence i believe capcom used something now uh, called the wet gore effect that's why everything looks so gross in the game i think the gameplay looks good uh i think the mix of resident evil 4 and dead space mixed with kind of evil within i think you know it's still an over the shoulder third person perspective but the fact that capcom have kind of changed it up a bit and that you have to stand still on the spot in order to get a precise shot when you fire your gun i think that's great that's gonna definitely give you a fight or flight type of feeling while you're playing the game um, and the fact that if you move and you try and shoot something you might not hit what you're aiming at and end up getting your face chewed off 
I think story-wise, Capcom are definitely going to smash it with this one. Um, I think it's going to do something very similar to the Resident Evil remake uh, in the way that, like I said before, they're going to have all the original story elements within the remake and then they're just going to build upon the original story and add bits and pieces to it. So I'm looking forward to playing through each of Leon and Claire's campaigns and see what the full story has to offer. Uh, one thing I didn't touch upon actually previously was you get to see some of the puzzles that the game's going to be throwing at you. Um, they had a completely different spin on the statue puzzle from the original Resident Evil 2. And this time it's like there's this kind of code underneath the, the actual statue that you have to decipher in order to get a key, I'm guessing. Um, other than that, there wasn't that many puzzles that I can think of that were shown during the gameplay demo, but that one looked promising because obviously older players who have played the original aren't really going to know what to do when they play the remake. So the puzzles are going to bring something fresh and new to proceedings. The enemy and character designs look brilliant. Um, the monsters in particular look great from what I've seen. You know, they've just been upgraded a little bit using today's technology via the PlayStation 4. And in particular, the zombies, they just look scary again. Resident Evil 2 Remake looks to be making the zombies not just scary again, but also dangerous and unrelenting foes, you know, that you get to face up against. The weapons that were shown during the gameplay demos were meaty they sounded just fine the sound effects for them were great and they did the damage that you'd expect them to do and of course i love the fact that the item boxes and the ink ribbons are back as well as the typewriters but here's a couple of things that i really really hope they don't fuck up um i hope that every enemy that was in the original is in this game because i want to see what the spiders look like in this version of resident evil 2 i want to see what the mutated plants look like. I want them to have the liquors that are mixed with plant DNA later on in the game. The crows, the dogs, the giant moth. I just want all the enemies from the original to be in this game, but obviously, you know, more detailed and just looking better on today's hardware. I really don't want Capcom going too overboard with the story as well. I don't mind them adding little bits here and there, you know, changing the story slightly. And if they do something similar to what the Resident Evil remake, the, the remake of the original game, did, I'll be happy. Because it never really fucked with the series lore too much. And yes, I know Resident Evil's lore is pretty much fucked anyway. It's kind of all over the place. But still, 2 has a nice tight storyline. A lot like the first game. So it doesn't really need to be fucked with in the first place. I would like the pacing from the original to cross over to this remake as well. Now I know Capcom have said that you're going to be able to explore new areas and also more of the city. I'm fine with that as long as it doesn't take away from the feeling that you need to get off the city streets and find a safe haven. You see in the original Resident Evil 2 the streets are very oppressive and zombies are just coming at you left right and center. That's the feeling you get when you're playing the original game so it's kind of a fast-paced sequence of events that lead you to the RPD building where you eventually get off the streets. I'm hoping this remake, even after adding some extra bits here and there, can retain that same pace that the original had. They were able to pull it off with the first game's remake, so I'm hoping they pull it off again with this remake. And lastly, I think the inclusion of Hunk and Tofu, uh, which has been mentioned by Capcom after you complete the game with Leon and Claire. I believe Tofu you're able to get by finishing Leon and Claire's campaign separately. And Fourth Survivor, which is where you play as Hunk, um, is unlocked through getting an A grade on Leon and Claire's playthroughs. And as for the game's costumes, they're looking like they're going to be, unfortunately, DLC which is to be expected in this day and age. Obviously, I'm not a big supporter of DLC. Fuck DLC. But it is what it is. Other than that, I would say that Resident Evil 2 is shaping up to be a really impressive remake of a classic. This game is my favourite game ever made. I love this game to bits. And I know there's a lot of other people out there who share the same love for the game as I do. Um, I'm also a massive Resident Evil fan as well. So to keep me happy and to put a smile on my face as I was watching the trailer and the gameplay being showed off um, is a big task for Capcom to have undertaken, you know, because it's not just me, there's a couple million people out there that are the same as me. So um, the game looks impressive. It looks very impressive. Obviously at the moment it's too early to actually have a final opinion on the game because it's just a couple of trailers and some gameplay. But from what I've seen, the game is shaping up 
very nicely. So anyway, I'm going to round it off. Um, I've been John from A Guy and His Games. If you like this video, if you liked my thoughts and opinions on the Resident Evil 2 remake, don't forget to give me a like. And if you dislike the video, give me a dislike as well. If you want to keep updated with the content that I put out, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. And also hit that bell icon because it will let you know when I put any new videos up. Um, I'm going to continue this series of thoughts and opinions videos as well as my top 10s and reviews videos as well. So the only thing left to say is I've been John from A Guy and His Games signing out.